Hello everybody, my name is Steve and welcome to another Mac 84 live stream. Today we're going to be looking at some Macintosh SE30s because that's what I have to repair today. And hopefully this will be the, the third one successful in a row. We'll see how that goes. But my goodness, we already have a bunch of people here in the chat. So let me take some time and say hello to these lovely folks. Uh, if I could read them. Yes, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Today's been an interesting day. It's just going to get more interesting, I'm sure. So we have Dana from Dana Does Stuff. Hello and welcome. We have Trina. We have Mike from Mike's Mac Shack. Uh, we have Mozam. Um, we have Trina. We have Retro Techie. We have Hot Rod. Uh, we have Action Retro. Uh, Sean, thank you very much for joining. And we have Neil. And let's play Caldeo. Sure. Uh, and <laughs> Sand Mac 356. Um, and I'm sure others will be trickling in as we start. My apologies if I mispronounce anyone's name. That is just what I do, and I'm terrible at it. So, <laughs> And Justin. Hello, Justin. Welcome to the show. So I, I just haven't been uh, uh, doing things uh, as frequently as I would like, so um, I would like to uh, uh, try and focus on some scripted videos that I'm doing, so I'm not doing as many live streams. Um, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get some content out soon, other than live streams, because I know some people... Uh, don't like to sit with me for three hours, and I can see why. Uh, my hair is an absolute mess, because I need a haircut. See, it looks better when I'm like this, but no. Um, but yeah, that has not happened, and I'm not holding my breath on that. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, hope everyone out there is doing well. Um, yes, there are two of you, Trina, because I can't remember what I did five seconds ago, let alone five minutes ago. Um, but we could always use more of you. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, so... Um, to uh, bring you guys up to speed, uh, I repaired two Macintosh SE30 boards previously, um, and they seem to be in working shape. I have to put them through my rigorous testing, um, which is, well, pretty detailed, actually. I uh, do software tests and hardware tests, so that'll be, uh, that'll be uh, done offline, because that's not really too exciting. And Joshua, that's right, you in the chat, Joshua, you... Your SE30 is up next, so hopefully we'll have some good luck with it. Oh, Victor, thank you very much for the super chat. Yeah, it's very early to start super chatting, but I'm not opposed to it. Thank you very much, Victor. Greatly appreciated. Eep, thank you very, very much. Um, and Nick, hello, welcome to the channel. All right, so yes, it's your son's machine. Well, th you sent it to me, so. <laughs> and Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. Eep, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so... Um, yeah, I fixed uh, two SE30s, and uh, they were they, they seem to be working now. Um, so Joshua says, um, the SE30 that we're about to repair today was given to him after spending 25 years in an indoor closet. Okay, well, fingers crossed. Uh, the battery did not leak. Wow, that's, a, that's, that's reassuring. Okay. Um, what is not reassuring is what happened to my soldering iron. You may have saw on Twitter... Um, I got this new soldering iron, um, this little thing here, this is a Kesger, K-S-G-E-R, whatever, um, this has a rattle in it, a little concerning. Uh, what was concerning about it, well, is this, I'm going to show you, hopefully OBS will uh, work on this correctly. Uh, I'm going to go into a picture-picture mode, I'm going to show you something full screen, and uh, I'll be in the picture, and um, yes, Joe's back for the Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you'll see exactly what happened to my soldering iron. I'll help narrate. So here's here's a, a clip of what happened. So um, what happened here was I put the soldering iron in boost mode because I was testing something, and I removed the tip of it. I did not notice the screen had frozen. So the screen on that uh, soldering iron is completely frozen. And so I wasn't really paying much attention. I, I melted some solder on it. Um, and then I went ahead and uh, started preparing and setting up this little board that I was working on. Now I was filming at the time, which is why the camera is set up. And uh, I'm not really paying attention to the soldering iron because it's in my right hand, but I'm holding it away from my face because I'm not that stupid. And you'll see an orange glow now. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty darn hot. That is that, and I'm like trying to put it back in there, and I realize that's cloth that has stuff in it, and I'm trying to lower the heat on that, and yeah, that wasn't happening because it wasn't responsive. So I ended up just turning the darn thing off, 
And you could see how lava hot that got, and that really scared the bejesus out of me. Uh, so yeah, that got very, very hot, and uh, it's it's you know then it was cooling down and, and everything. But yeah, that sort of put me off soldering for a few days, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't want to be anywhere near that. Um, so yeah, that was quite exciting, in a bad way. Um, and yeah, I mean it it was. It was okay afterwards, but, um, so I, I am very curious as to what had happened. And, uh, I reached out on, uh, Twitter to share that video and, uh, yeah, it's not supposed to do that. So I, I shared that video on Twitter and, um, um, a few individuals who are much smarter than me and know a lot of these things. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly, Sean. It's because I didn't take the plastic off because maybe I'll return the darn thing if it's going to keep acting up. Um, and so... What I believe happened is one of a few things. Um, obviously, the screen froze up there. So something happened on the little firmware or whatever that's running on this, this set here that had caused it just to, to freeze up. Now, it could be that when I pulled out the other soldering tip here, um, that a connection was bridged slightly or this just malfunctioned. Uh, it was on this boost mode, which I don't really have to ever set it to because I'm not... I'm, I don't intend on doing that. Um, and so it was on that boost mode when I took this out. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. And then I put the new tip back in. I just you know jammed it back in there. And uh, it got hot right away, which is what the soldering iron tip is supposed to do. And um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was just off camera. And I didn't really realize how hot it got until I looked. And I'm glad I looked because, my goodness, that was a fire hazard. This thing probably would have exploded. Um, so, yeah. Now, I did use this tip afterwards. Um, oh, thank you very much, Andre. Um, greatly appreciate it. Um, I did use this afterwards. I set it to a low temp, and it didn't it didn't heat up uh, like, a, like a lava rock. And this uh, seemed to be operating correctly. Uh, no, let's not try and do that. And so, um, I had a suggestion from someone on Twitter who knows much more about these than I do. And there are two settings that I turned on. One shows the voltage that is going to the iron. And two um, detects if there's a drop in voltage. Because if it tries to pull so much power, the amount of voltage it's going to send to the iron is going to be uh, lower. And so when that occurred, um, you can tell it to turn itself off. Now, whether it would have done that or not, with the OS being frozen, I don't know. But at least I turned those uh, those two functions on. So hopefully that'll be okay. Um yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen some stuff posted about it. I have not looked into upgrading the firmware or anything. Um, someone else who has this exact model says they've been very happy with it. So I think it was just a freak occurrence. Uh, Bruce from Brankus Creations uh, had a very similar instance, uh, and he believes it was something maybe related to when the tip was inserted, it was shorting something out, and it was just dumping electricity into it. So hopefully we will not have that same occurrence this time. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's stuck on welding mode. So um, I'm going to actually not use this tip right now because I don't have to. Uh, usually I stick to the smaller tips when, when needed. Um, and so I'm going to see. I, I wonder if these the exact same length. Yeah, okay. I was wondering maybe it was touching something it shouldn't. Uh, anyway, I'm going to stick to uh, this tip for now. Hopefully that doesn't have any problems. Um I don't want to get another one. I just got this one. It still has the plastic on it. Um, so, yeah. Hello, Michael. So, we were just going over how I almost burned the house down. But, um, yeah. So, hopefully that's not going to happen again. But, anyway. Uh, we're going to start looking at uh, the Macintosh SE30 that I'm going to be repairing today. And I wish this was a better... No, this doesn't really want to... Well... I guess we'll use that for the tips. I don't really have a space to put the tips while I'm swapping them out. So I have two of these soldering iron holder things here. I guess I'll just... Because if, if it's hot, I don't want to touch it, obviously. Um, and the way you replace them, you just pull them up here. But it's suspiciously close to where it gets hot. And I don't think I'm comfortable touching that right now. So I'm going to get some pliers and do that if I ever have to. But, um, yeah. Okay, so never soldered before, trying to figure out first project. Well, I would suggest uh, getting a small little project, like a little circuit board and just some, some connectors and stuff to solder onto. This one I did incorrectly. I had to fix that. Um, but that's just because I was stupid and in a rush and excited. 
But um, I, I suggest playing around with a small project or get something broken, like um, a, a broken uh, VCR or um, an old satellite TV box or something that has no value and just mess around with that. Um, well, no, Joshua, it's not Tim's board. It's actually your... Uh, your son's board uh, I'll be working on next because Tim's board works now. So yay. So we're actually going to bring out uh, your uh, son's board, Joshua. Um, and we're going to see if uh, if we get that working. How about that? Yeah, Micro Center Project would be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the only downside to that presentation. <laughs> Okay. So here. Oh, your son's name is also Tim. I'm sorry. I'm just getting confused. But <laughs> you know what I mean. You're going to ignore my Twitter response because I was like, huh, what? But <laughs> All right. So this is uh, Tim, the other Tim's uh, SE30 board. Okay. So it actually looks pretty darn clean. I do see... Some spots where, ooh, it looks like we have some vias which have gotten uh, a little crispy. But um, this this actually looks very, very clean. Um, was this washed at all or anything like that? Because really, it looks great. Yes, hopefully uh, my disparaging comments about those eBay sellers will help, but who knows? <laughs> Is the solid capacitor is better than the electrolytic? Well, it's it's all uh, opinion. Um, I per personally use tantalum capacitors. They um, have a tendency to last pretty long. Uh, they don't. They will not have the the problems that um, other other capacitors uh, tend to do. Uh, they do look different. So if your if your whole goal is to get a period accurate looking SE30, um, then you know you you want to replace it with older looking caps. Uh, I use tantalums. They're easier to put on. Uh, so I charge a little bit less and they are long lasting, but they are more expensive. So I have to charge a little more. So <laughs> it's just one of those things where you're sort of damned if you damned if you don't. Um, but I have had no problems with the tantalum capacitors. Uh, for me, they work out pretty well. I'm just taking some before photos of this machine uh, just in case I have to refer back to these later. So I always do when I get a board on the desk here. Uh, usually I do it before I live stream, but I did not have time today. So that's what we're just doing now. And uh, I'll flip it over. But this board, it, it really does look like it's in it's in beautiful shape. Um, other than uh, some of the corrosion I see or the, the leakage around the caps, um, really this this looks pretty beautiful. And we'll see that in a second when I, when I view it under the microscope because um, you can't really see it right now. So let me uh, just plug my phone back in so it charges, and then we'll switch back uh, to here. So you did spray it with air, okay. <laughs> yes, be used against the evil banks. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. All right, so I'm gonna put the memory back in the box here so I don't misplace it. And move my keyboard here so we don't uh, lose that. That would be bad. And let's switch on the microscope here. Hey, Logan, how you doing? Did you lose the stream? I hope not. I hope not. Is it back? <laughs> is you two playing games with me? Is it because Logan joined? Is that why? Is that why? Tacos and french fries. Interesting choice. Okay, so we have adjustable keyboard for $800. Oh, no, no, no. We're back. Oh, YouTube must be having hiccups. I have zero drop frames here, so... I, I didn't touch anything, I swear. Um, okay, great. So, um, let's get started here. Let me uh, bring over the... Microscope here. And we're going to switch over. Let's see if this wants to work today. No, it does not. So I have to open QuickTime. Every once in a while, I have to unplug this camera. Plug it back in. OBS doesn't like it, so I have to open a QuickTime window. Go to new movie recording. I have to... Maybe? Maybe? It's beach balling. Oh boy. Come on. I think it's not having fun. Uh, 
All right, this is what happens when you hot plug USB items in while you're doing uh, a stream. Um, the USB stuff starts to lag and stuff like that. Hold, please. <laughs> we'll, we'll get this working. Uh, let me see if I... I probably have something plugged into the wrong USB port. I don't think I changed anything. But hello, everyone who's joining. We'll just get back to this in a moment. Let me just make sure that this is going to work. Maybe. Maybe. There we go. Okay. That's... No? That's so strange. It, like, worked there for a second. And then it went bye-bye. And didn't want to work anymore. Um, let's try this again. Huh. Well, this is confusing. That's awesome. Uh, we need to view the microscope. Otherwise, this uh, stream won't be that interesting. Let me just unplug the secondary camera here. Um, that might be causing a problem, potentially. see if that yeah I, it's it's uh whenever and bruce has the same problem whenever you're hot plugging usb video items uh obs doesn't like that so let's try and temp fade again so unplug this plug it back in maybe yeah something is uh, a little screwy on my setup and it just does not like to work sometimes. Uh, so I don't think it's YouTube or anything, actually. I think it's uh, just my machine here. Uh, let's make sure this is plugged in. Yeah, I mean, it's plugged in directly to the back of the machine. We'll get this working. It might just take a second, so apologize. Apologies. So the camera lights up. It worked a little bit before. I think there's just too much data flowing around on this machine. It's like, yeah, I don't want to do it. Yeah, all right. Operation could not be completed. Thank you, QuickTime, for the very descriptive message. That is such a nice thing for you to say. <sighs> hey, Raw Elements. Okay, let's try and get this working. Come on. There we go. There we go. Yay. All right. I don't know why, but now it wants to work. Okay, cool. So let's let's first admire this beautiful board here. Um, I mean, look at that. If Bruce was in the chat, I mean, take a look. This is this is a beautiful shape. Most of the most of the places, this thing is in beautiful shape. Looks like it just came out of an ultrasonic cleaner. To be perfectly honest with you, I mean, how about that? Excellent, excellent shape. Uh, by the capacitors, there is some crust there. Uh, we're going to look at the serial number so I can identify this video in the future when I've lost all my notes. Okay. It's very shiny. <laughs> no hot glue, that's right. Uh, that, that glue board is still torturing me. I have some audio issues i got to resolve on that. Now, this is where we do have some problems. You can see right here with it. Those look, actually look like some... Eating away traces. Yeah. Ooh. Well, you can fix that. Um, so we have that to fix. Now, uh, re remind me. Um, <laughs> I know I've never seen one this nice, but uh, Bruce, there we go. You are in the chat. You're just lurking. Um, ooh. Yeah. So we we do have some some splashes. It's like splashes. Look at this. So ooh, that's. Hmm. Yeah. This all looks delicious. Um, everything else looked nice, though, but this all looks suspect. But hello, Bruce. Welcome to the chat. Um, let's see. Yeah, so something, something was just, uh, <laughs> tinker around in here, but the, yeah, the <laughs> Brian's like, there we go. That's what we came here to see. Um, they don't look too bad. I am concerned, obviously, about this area. It looks like there's a trace that is just gone. But we could hopefully fix that. But yeah, this those are going to smell. I, I could, I'm waiting for that smell. I'm preparing myself mentally for that smell. And let's see by the power connector here. Mm, yeah, these look a little crunchy. Wow. 
yeah, you could you could definitely see there's been some reactions around here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so that's that's a little bit. Hmm. Um, and let's check out the one by the PDS slot here. Okay, not too bad. That trace is just like it's like just ate away there. You could see there used to be a a trace going from uh, the left to the right on that bottom line. And yeah, now there's a. Uh, doesn't look like there's anything there. So, yeah. Oh, I, I, we'll see if they pop. I mean, my goodness. All right, let's check out the two capacitors by the Romsim here first. Okay, yeah. So, again, we have uh, this crunchy goof. That comes right off, but it's still concerning. Um, and it's not flat, so you're not seeing it correctly. But let's uh, get that lined up there. There we go. Yeah, so that's a bit disgusting. And then over here, this is by the memory modules here. Let's see how this one looks. That's not too bad. I am concerned about this, the via here because um, as I zoom in, I see all this black blackness there. And uh, if I gently scrape away here is there copper underneath oh there's still some well we caught this just in time I think so this will this will be an interesting repair um, I'm sorry, I, I, the vias, vias, whatever you want to call them, they're little holes that go from one, um, let's say the top of the board to the bottom. Uh, so like, for example, this little, this little guy here I was just scraping away is one of those. Uh, I call them vias. I'm probably incorrectly calling them something that I'm not supposed to because my brain broke. Um, but yeah, that, that is basically uh, these little hole things there. Um... I, I've never tried JL uh, PCB or PCB Way, but I hear good things about PCB Way, and maybe that's just because everyone's spamming them and they're getting sponsored. But um, yeah, okay. So um, these are gonna these are gonna smell, um, but they have to be taken off. So <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. Um, interesting note: the CPU here has what well, looks like Sharpie or something just like painted on one side um let's see if i could get a close-up of this uh with the with the microscope it might be might be too uh yeah you can't really see it there but um you know what let's tilt this let me bring it closer and uh let's tilt this a little bit oh thank you bruce i'm not going crazy well i am but not in that regard Okay, so let's just bring this over the edge of the desk here. Just to look at this a little bit easier here. So, we're going to look at the processor here. If uh, it lets me... Oh, this piece of wood is sometimes the most annoying thing because it is way too big in some areas. Okay, so here we have the processor. And see, look at that. There's this black stripe on the edge. I don't know if it's paint or what but there we go I don't think I've seen that before so yeah interesting but uh, yeah that's a uh, 16 megahertz 68030 processor so let's uh, back the microscope up so it doesn't fall off the desk or topple over or anything embarrassing like that Yeah, that is odd, but, I mean, you notice these little things when you've repaired a few of these models, and you're like, hey, that looks a little different. The three of them I looked at before did not look like that. All right, anyway, let's, <laughs> Sean, you would paint, you would paint the processor. On the next episode, I'm sure you're going to do that, and then you're, <laughs> you're going to, you're going to say, look, <laughs> I've modded the processor to match the outside. <laughs> definitely check out if you like sc30s definitely check out action retro sean 
uh, in the chat here. Well, his name is Action Retro in the chat, but his name is Sean. Um, he did a fantastic video series on this cursed Macintosh SE30 that he picked up off of Craigslist and just has been modding the heck out of it. And uh, I removed all the curses I could when I recapped the machine, but my goodness. Okay, all right. So we're going to uh, remove these caps first. Um, I'm actually going to have to use the old uh, soldering station I have here because that um, has the heat gun. And I have not purchased a new heat gun yet because this one still works. So cross your fingers there. Uh, paint does not equal thermal paste. Oh, Brian. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do here is... Um, <laughs> where's my safety goggles? Here we go. Because these are going to be poppers. I, I, think, I think these are going to pop. And so you're going you're gonna to see me squeak, squeal and, and screech like a little girl here as they go push. Um, yeah. All right. So we got my tweezers here and we got some flux. And yeah, I think we're ready to go. I just need some heat separators here. Um, there's my good tweezers. We'll save you for later. Where the rest of those go? Where the rest of those go? There, I always use these little uh, PCI card slot covers uh, to protect uh, the board from heat. Um. <laughs> uh, yes, well, you know, the, in my experience, Bruce, the caps don't just fly up and hit the microscope. The caps go and just slam me in the face. Or I'll have them on the tweezers and I'll be putting them into the trash bin and the sticky yellow band around the capacitor will stick and it'll slowly descend into the trash bin. Then it'll explode and they'll get me on my arm, which is really nice. So, fun times. Who says there there is not a, a risk of uh, danger here with these things? Okay, I need to find those little, uh, those little PCI card slot things here. I found another one here. We could use that. Uh, anybody has any questions about what I am doing, I will do my best to respond. Uh, we have about 40 people here. Not a bad showing at all, so if uh, you have any questions, feel free to ask. If I don't get to your question, I am sorry. Uh, but uh, feel free to ask it again. It's not like I'm ignoring you. Uh, I'm just trying to multitask. Okay. So, eye-seeking caps. Yes. <laughs> Don't give them any ideas. All right, so I'm gonna put uh, these little uh, PCI brackets here um, just uh, to sort of dissipate the heat that is going right onto this plastic that's the the ROM sim there. Um, I don't want that to be affected. Uh, it's sort of inevitable to have some melting plastic on these boards when you're shoving as much heat around as you are. Um, so hopefully that does not happen, but if it does, uh, it will be minimized. All right, let's turn this uh, heat gun on. And uh, it'll be a bit loud, but uh, hopefully this will this will work. Um, oh, Claire, thank you very much. Uh, first time I catch you live. Been getting a lot recently. Hope you. Oh well, thank you very much. I, th I think I've seen you on some streams before, but it's been a while. Um, I haven't streamed in a few days anyway, so welcome back. All right, so let's uh, get uh, the first cap off the board here. And hope these don't pop like fireworks because I don't like that. Ooh, I can smell this guy already. Well, it's it's gonna lift off. Maybe. It's sticking to the tweezers. All right, it didn't pop. Good. That's a stinky one, though. Oof. Oh, well, on this series, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right, so the first one's off there. Uh, don't see any damage to the plastic, which is good. Um, oh my goodness, that is the worst smell. All right, so let's uh, get this one off as well. Uh, 
hopefully this board will be pretty straightforward. Uh, like I was mentioning before, I don't really see any any damage elsewhere. I am concerned about the little vias here um, because some of them look pretty nasty. So hopefully we will not run into any issues there, but uh, only time will tell. So get that lined up for everybody to see. Of course, we're turning the microscope on and off. I've screwed up the white balance, so my apologies. It is slow pop. Get off of my tweezers. Okay, that one's in the trash as well. Okay, excellent. Oh, I used to have one of those Dell laptops. I actually had a bunch of docking stations and interesting stuff for them. I actually gave it all away to somebody at a computer show. <laughs> I'm never going to have one of these laptops again. They weren't too bad. The first Core Duo Yoana, uh, I'm sorry, Centrino uh, models weren't the best. Uh, but the later ones, I think, were pretty zippy. Of course, the one at work I had was a crummy one. But, uh, oh, yeah, you heard that one squeak. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Apache Thunder, they actually sent me some. I didn't even tell them they arrived yet because uh, things have been so busy with work. Uh, they actually sent me some to look at. Uh, I will be doing a video on those. Uh, they are very cool looking. I can't wait to try them out. So I'm testing uh, some for that individual. Uh, I showed their Instagram on a previous stream, but they are doing fantastic work. Um, hot, as if I'm saying hot, it'll help the situation. Uh, they're doing fantastic work and I can't wait to uh, share the results. Okay, excellent. So we're gonna try uh, for this one here. I ah, ordered a batch. Good idea. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Somebody contacted me not too long ago, um, and uh, they were saying, "Oh, you know, can you just send me uh, some of those those VRAM sims? I'm sure you got a bunch of them." I'm like, "What are you talking about? I have like one for the machine I have, and the rest didn't come with any." <laughs> I wish I had a bunch of them. Those are the things you could never have too many of. All right, so let's try and get uh, this capacitor off without too much trouble. Yes, I did respond to you. Um, so uh, I did email you. I know uh, you said you didn't, uh, you didn't respond back yet, Apache. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> just a wee bit busy. Uh, but uh, I, I apologize for any slow responses. I will get back. Uh, to you as time allows, but uh, I'd be happy to look into the machine that we were discussing. And hopefully we can get that in working order. Uh, to put it into perspective, uh, the board previous to this came to me in February. Oh, this, is, this one's going to go. Maybe it did. Maybe it just says soft pop. Um, <laughs> soft pop! Uh, the board previous to this came to me in February, and then this board came to me last month. So I am still behind on some repairs, and then I have some older repairs, uh, like the uh, 575 sound chip that I'm still trying to figure out. Oof, it's a nasty one. Um, but I'm still working on that. I have some other repairs that I have to keep working on. So <laughs> The Mac Daddy one. I don't know. Have you seen him? Oh, boy. Uh, I haven't seen the whole board. Yes, this is this one has a CPU socket there, Bruce. That would be that would be the one here. My God! Right, so let's take a better look at this. Oof! Oof! Look at that! Uh, I believe I did. Um, I I'll I'll double. You know, what, let me let me check now. My sent folder is not nearly as large as my inbox. Uh, so let me check. I will not read your email out loud. Don't worry. Uh, let me just double check. I'm pretty sure I responded to you and then I tweeted you out just because I didn't know which one you respond faster on. 
Yes, um, it looks like you sent me an email from your .mac email address at mac.com. First letters of that email are Z-E-N, and it ends at mac.com. So maybe you were using an older email address. Not sure, but check that out when you can. How many caps does this board have? Excellent question. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 caps. Uh, not including the axial. Those are, what, 13? Um, something like that. Something around that. I can't count sometimes. Um, sorry, just uh, catching up on the chat here. LT Linus Tech Tips is doing an Apple channel? What's well, if it's not beige, don't wake me up. I mean, all right, let's take a look. I have to take the safety goggles off because I can't see a thing. All right. Ooh. All right, it looks like that trace is still there. Um, where's my scalpel? Where did I put my scalpel? I misplaced my tools all the time. There it is. Okay. Yes, I do try my best to respond. Um... I apologize if I'm late sometimes. Wow, that that via just completely came off there. It looks like it did, unless this was just gunk uh, sitting on top of it. Let's uh, let's investigate further, shall we? Oof. All right, good. There's there's still some copper under that, but. Yeah, this will this will need a ultrasonic clean just to get some of these this crap out of the crevices here. Ugh. It's beige. What? 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 Bruce, he's taking our our our. I'm outraged. Yeah, well, I'm sure he'll get all the facts wrong anyway. Anywho. <laughs> Says says a guy who only has fifty five hundred subscribers here. All right, so this trace here. Let's take a look at this one. Well, that does still seem. Yeah, there's still some metal under there, so that's good. Um, Uh, all right. Well, I, I re honestly don't watch their their channel, so I, I'm just talking out my butt here. But uh, hey, the more vintage Macintosh content, the better. As long as it doesn't go into the story of Macintosh clones, I'm good for a while. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll get an angry letter. All right, so let's uh, get into focus here. There we go. Much better. At least for me. Let me adjust the the camera a little bit. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you sent it to me when you did. Um, this doesn't look too too bad. Uh, I've seen worse. I think Joe's uh, well, not Joe's board, but the board Joe sent me <laughs> was in far worse condition. But uh, this. This trace, uh, I'd, I'd clean up a bit. Maybe just splash some solder on there. But uh, yeah, this this is all. This will all be cleaned up. <laughs> you could post the link, and people could watch whatever the heck they want. Um, but look at this fresh, fresh sponge. That's going to win the viewers over. Mmm, delicious. Angry 84. Okay, so that's going to have to have some uh, work done to it. Let's get the rest of the caps off before we go into a cleaning frenzy here. Uh, that I mean, it could be worse, but... 
Now, surprising, uh, well, I was going to say surprisingly this one doesn't look too bad, but we <laughs> have this, this pile here. This, ugh, let's take that off. Steve Scotch tips. <laughs> oh boy. Well, thank you. I'm I'm sorry uh, that uh, sometimes my streams are missed. Thankfully, they are all recorded, uh, so you could always catch up with them afterwards. But I know it's not the same as seeing it live. It's just like a TV show premiering. It's like oh, I got to see what it was like. All right, so let's. Um, Let's get the the flux out and let's let's attack these. These are going to be the most annoying one uh, next up in the list uh, because they're right next to that plastic connector there. And you know I'm all for people uh, making more content for Classic Max. Everyone knows nobody has the time to make all the cool videos, uh, but uh, you know if they if they mix up Power PCs with the 68Ks. I'll know. I'll know. I'll write angry letters to the editor like an old man. Okay, so let's get some some more uh, pieces here just to get some of the heat uh, separation there. And they probably have much more expensive microscopes and tools and stuff. But at the end of the day, um, the knowledge of these machines is really what's important. And I'm sorry, I was a lonely... Uh, dorky kid growing up with a thick Mac World uh, secrets book that I borrowed from the library and way too much free time on my hands. So, if you're going to compete with knowledge, uh, I'm sorry. It's gonna you're going to have to work for it. <laughs> oh, I'm very sorry, uh, Bruce, for mixing up your your dictionary. When are you when are you launching a, an ebook version so I could <laughs> I could follow that? I'm going to have to print out that, uh, I'm going to have to screenshot that right now, Bruce, and uh, just print it out and stick it by my monitor here, just so I don't forget. Ooh, that one, that one did a wee pop. Okay, off goes that one. Oh, look at the beautiful mess it left. Oof. Oh, that one really stunk. Whoop. It's starting to rise up. That one came right off. Last one here. Make sure it's in view, so if it explodes, everybody sees. Cause that's what you're really here for. Let's be honest. You don't care if they they get fixed. Maybe you do. But you want to see the bad things happen. All right. Oh, I had it right, just for the benefit of others. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. I am screenshotting your reply right now. Oh, now the chat moved and I can't. Hold on. There we go. Okay. <laughs> am I done yet? No! <laughs> Professor, don't you remember what we told you five minutes ago? No! All right, so... Oof. Yeah, I mean... It looks pretty nasty. We got some solder balls floating around from the heat. Uh, looks like this trace may have some cleanup required in it, at the bottom there. Uh, let's try and fix this up a little bit so you guys can see what I'm seeing. There we go. <laughs> no worries, Mike. Uh, let's see. Yes, oof. Oof. Oh. Oof. 
Oof, jeez. Yeah, this this stuff has just been baking here for years. Very interesting. Uh, we'll try and clean this up as best we can. And uh, the ultrasonic cleaner will hopefully play a good role in this as well. <laughs> My virtual ears! Ooh, yeah, this just has a lot of a lot of gunk on here. Sorry, let me refer to my my Bruce dictionary here, which I just took a screenshot of because my brain is made out of Swiss cheese. Um, there's a lot of gunge on here mixed with some light scunge. So there we go. Keep that on our second monitor here. <laughs> it doesn't look like melted plastic as much as it looks like uh, just. I mean, there's a whole mix of a bunch of junk here, uh, but there's there's all sorts of goodies. So we're going to clean that up in a little bit. We have five more caps to remove, and then we have two axial caps to remove from the board. Um, so we're going to do these next. Here we are. Okay, so let's uh, do this one next. Hopefully it'll come quietly. I'm quite certain it's Scott. <laughs> now we have a team of experts keeping uh, an eye out for us, Bruce. All right, so. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, this one's a stinky one. This one's the worst out of all of them. As far as the stink goes. Oof. Get off my tweezers. Get off! See, this this is this is the problem. They just dangle like that because of that little sticky yellow ring. Ugh. I put the heat gut down. I have to get another tool. Out of the way from there. Jeez. All right. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right. Well, at least uh, this whole area should heat up pretty quick. So these should be able to be removed fairly easily. Let's hope. All right. Yeah, very glad there's no smell of vision with this channel. Otherwise, you'd all be running away and unsubscribing. By the way, I have 5,555 subscribers. Quite happy with that number right, right now. I love repeating numbers. I have the same sickness that Steve Wozniak has. All right, so let's get these off of here. These little ones usually go pretty easily. Yep, that one just came right off. Now, get off the... Tweezers, your darn used capacitor. There we go. And let's get the rest out of here. So if you go to Mac84.net, I'm going to put up a brand new scented candle for sale for all of you. And that is Eau de la Capacitor. Whoa, that's a popper. And uh, that beautiful scent of a candle that nobody wants to be without. Mmm. Oof. Yeah, that's disgusting.
All right, here's the last one. Well, that capacitor did not go into the trash can and instead flew behind my computer. Excellent. I'll be finding that in about three years. <laughs> Exploded capacitor scented candles. I'm sorry, we're, we're just out of stock. Those were a very popular item this year. Oh, boy, look at this. Look at all this. My goodness gracious. Okay, that, that is... Um, that's definitely um gone. We're gonna have to fix that. <laughs> Oopsie. Um, yeah, that doesn't look good either. Oh, excellent, Distro Hopper. That's a great find. Let me uh, zoom in on the comments. Uh, I'm blind and I can't see anything. So there we go. A little bit better. <laughs> Kiss my RS6000. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, they're going to wonder what the basement... Why does the basement smell like rabbit poop and weird capacitors? Oh, boy. <laughs> Aromatherapy capacitor. <laughs> Trogdor! The Burninator! Oh, right. Okay, so now that the caps are off, we could do some cleaning, uh, which will require me to plug in the uh, potentially exploding soldering iron. So looking forward to that. Um, it doesn't smell like mold. It smells like bad fish. I don't know. Bad vegetables. Bad something. All right, so we're turning that off. Moving that over there. Um, we're going we're gonna to tempt fate. And uh, use our soldering iron here to uh, clean up some of this junk. Uh, first, I'm just going to use some alcohol and a, and a Q-tip here just to clean up some stuff. Lava stick, yes. <laughs> Mac 84 proudly supports lava stick brand soldering irons. When a regular soldering iron won't do, grab your lava stick. Yeah, so a lot of the surface crud is, just, is cleaning up pretty well. Just being very gentle here. I don't want to lift up any pads or anything. Oof. Yeah, that pad is just gone. Absolutely gone. Yeah. That's going to need some repair. Um... That's going to be fun because it's right under that chip and uh, I hate taking these chips off. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it, it's, it's annoying. So that'll be fun. That to look forward to. I feel like this is a two stream, uh, this is a, a two streamer, um, but uh, we'll get there when we get there, I suppose. And this is going to have to definitely go in the ultrasonic. Um, yeah. Oof. Yeah, this soldering iron has a turbo button. I'm never pressing that turbo button again. I'll tell you what. It's funny because this board looked absolutely beautiful. Uh, except where the capacitors are. Okay. Yeah, so it's it's funny we have well not funny but it's uh interesting that there's two identical bad traces here, right by this pad, going onto this Sony chip, and then the other Sony chip here, there's the same thing. We have a bad uh well this might be able to be cleaned up, but uh, we have a bad one going right there. So good times, good times. So we're gonna have to fix that up. And uh Get all this crud off of these uh, caps here. 
<laughs> Ludicrous speed. Go! Uh, this trace doesn't look too happy either. Let's take a look at that. Alright, that, that's cleaning up okay. Let's do a continuity test, see if there's actually uh, something connecting there. Oh, the sound didn't work. That's right. I remember you saying that. So, yeah, I, it's all coming together now. All right, so there, there is making a connection there. Um, not making a connection from here to here. So that's problematic. So we'll have to fix a lot of these little little bits here. Okay. Small batch isopropyl alcohol. Gluten-free alcohol for those of you who, who need the best. All right, and then I'm going to take off uh, these axial caps. Usually wait to do that, but since we have to do so much cleaning on this board, I'm probably going to do that pretty soon. Uh, so let's plug in the soldering iron. Hopefully nothing blows up because I don't want anything to blow up. I really don't. Uh, <laughs> we're going to actually, we're going to plug in the problematic tip because that's the one I'm going to use first for these axials. Um, <laughs> let's hope this doesn't get red hot because I don't want it blowing up. Safety first. Oh my goodness. All right. So we're going to turn this on. Why is it there? Okay. There it is. Uh, so it's set to 400. We're driving uh, 25 volts. That's normal. Beep! Alright, that means it's at its temperature. Should be happy. Um, no red yet. I'm gonna, we're going to put that where we can see it. <laughs> Keep our eye on it. You got it right, Mike. Uh, I, you know what? If someone wants to gift me a Heiko or Heiko or whatever, I'd be happy to get one. They are just way too out of my budget for uh, what I do right now. Um, I hear they are excellent. I just do not have the uh, the fundage to do that right now. But uh, maybe one day. And if anybody sees a soldering iron getting red hot. Just dial 911 and hopefully that'll get resolved. <laughs> I am scarred for life, Mike. I am scarred for life. All right, so let's, uh, where's, where's this business right here? Yeah, there we go. Let's try and get uh, these little axials off here. Who could that be? No, nothing. <laughs> yes, I need a lab coat. I need a, a pocket protector. Give me all the outrageous accessories. All right, so I'm just going to... Um, these two axials, this one here is actually... The uh, tips are curved. So there's no way I'm going to get those off of there without uh, undoing that first. So I'm going to add a little bit of solder to the back of this. I'm sorry you can't see. I'm just doing this quickly. <laughs> lab coat with the Mac OS logo on it. Oh boy. All right. So let me just try and, and bend this pin slightly. Okay. That kind of worked.
let's try from this side then. So this one's the one right next to the processor here. <laughs> face shield. Yeah, I need to put my face mask on, my face shield, full hazmat suit. That way when the capacitors pop, I'll be protected. And made fun of. Endlessly made fun of. There we go. See, with the right heat, these things should just come right out. And that's the problem with the other iron. Even cranking the heat up did not help at all. So I'm gonna go to the other leg here. You know, some people just snip them and then and then get them out, you know, that way. I, you know, sometimes do that too, but when possible, if I can, sometimes it's just easier to especially with an iron that gets hot like this. Sometimes you could just wiggle them out of there. Oh, I almost got it. Just use my fingers, actually. There we go. And that caps out. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. Eep! I do have a fire extinguisher, but it's upstairs. So, by the time something exploded and the time I would run up... Yeah, I'd be dead. I'd be dead. But thank you very much, Mike. Why am I looking over there? The microphone's over there. Eep! I keep forgetting the camera's over here now. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Who wants a who wants a used capacitor? Five cents. All right, so that one's out of the way. Let's get to this one here. Um, eh, it should be too hard to get rid of. I'm just going to freshen the solder on the back of, where did it go, on the back of these two pins here. Uh, just put the darn thing down and try and do it correctly here. Alright, so that should help a little bit. <laughs> I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Last words before this iron explodes and, and puts a hole through my skull. He said he was okay, so we didn't call a fire department, but then he stopped talking and his head fell down. We tried to solder it back together, but... Yep. <laughs> Thank you. You dial nine one when I tell you dial one again. All right. So this is the last leg of the axial here. We're just gonna hopefully just be able to get this one off here. Not too much trouble. And I'll show you some of the uh, eaten away plastic on this, which is concerning. <laughs> on the, the capacitor, that is. All right, so let's see if we get a, a good look at this. So here's the, the capacitor. Look at the bottom. Look at the bottom. So this is, uh, let me get you in focus here, sorry. 
So this capacitor was laying on the board like this, and here's the bottom of that. So that corrosive material just ate away at that, or maybe it was something else. But... Oh, good night, Trina. Thank you for uh, stopping by. Yeah, so fun times. And the trash it goes. All right, so all the old caps, uh, the problematic ones, have been removed from this board. Now it's time to do some cleaning. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to play it safe here and turn off the soldering iron completely. Then I'm going to switch the tips. <laughs> He's learning. Learned well you have. Let's see if this one grows, glows red hot. Okay, seems to be all right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just get a soldering ball at the end of this iron and just, you know, try and get some of this gunk out of here. Oh boy. Got some of the glue that was holding on the, the old cap there. That's lovely. Ugh. <laughs> yes, uh, the former governor of, what was it, California? <laughs> Has sent me a cease and desist. He said, why are you doing terrible impressions on me? And I said, I'm sorry, it's just my viewers demand it. And he goes, why? And then I stop. <laughs> Hope that, hopefully that'll last you for a while. <laughs> People just think I'm choking when I do those impressions. They're they're not incorrect. <laughs> Something is definitely negative going on with my with my throat there, but Ugh. Oh, yes, I will. Right, let's just put some flux on here just to help clean some of this, this gunk off. Ugh. This poor little board. Yeah, see, once once you scrape away all the old solder and everything, most of the time these pads will clean up pretty well. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to clean up the pads so they look pretty good, so we could put uh, some fresh components right on there. And also just help burn away and get away all of that, that gunk that used to be on there. But you do have to be very careful. You don't want to get these pads too hot. You don't want to rub rub the, the pads too hard or, or anything like that because you can rip them off the board quite easily. And that's not what we're trying to do here. And whenever you see a cloud of dirt and gunk, that means you're you're doing it correctly. You're getting all that stuff away from the pads there. And we'll be able to clean that up. <laughs> no, we turned off the welding mode. <laughs> My insurance didn't cover it. <laughs> The notch below immediate fire but I'm so glad to know that everyone is, is so concerned for my safety. <laughs> Wait, what are you placing bets on? Hold on. 
Well, for all 40 of you who are still sticking around, thank you very much. You've made it an hour and 12 minutes into the stream. Uh, so we are just cleaning up this board now. Uh, we have not put any new caps on it. We are cleaning this up. Uh, before we do that, there are some areas of concern, like these traces here, that need to be looked at uh, before any new components can be put on. So this might end up being a two-part stream. So just a fair warning, we may not be able to test this today. Just look at the amount of gunk from one pass. Oh boy. It gave the stream a sense of danger. Yeah, to me. I don't like that. I mean, if Bruce is plugging in stuff and things are exploding, that's great because he's like 3,000 miles away from me. But <laughs> when it's right in front of my face, says uh, no thanks. I guess I take these silly things off now. Oh, there we go. I can see much better. Oh, yeah, this is going to be fun. And this is exactly why, and I sorry, I'm sorry if I sound like a broken MP3 here. This is exactly why, time and time again, when people are posting things for sale or just saying, "Hey, look what I got," and people say you have to recap the machine, and people go, "Nah, you know it's working fine now. The sound doesn't work too well. Sometimes it doesn't turn on, but you know it still works. It doesn't need to be recapped." I say you have no idea until you look at it with a microscope and I don't care how good your vision is my vision's pretty good uh, even without my glasses or with my glasses but um, you just cannot see especially if it's under the capacitor the potential damage that the board has I mean there's there's another trace and there's one right next to it that likely needs some attention so <laughs> where's your sense of adventure <laughs> If Adventure had a name, it wouldn't be Mac 84. Uh, if all goes well, uh, I may be doing a trade. Someone wants to get rid of a bunch of stuff. And I may be accepting uh, a bunch of stuff from them, including some pretty neat items. I don't want to I don't want to get too ahead of myself here because it may not happen. Um, but in return. I am to attempt to fix up their Macintosh portable. <gasps> so I will be having one of those hopefully sometime soon. So I can take a look at it. Uh, from what I hear from Bruce, they are such lovely machines to look at. And even more fun to try and fix up. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. Um, yeah. But that'll be exciting. So I am just going through, uh, looking closely here and just trying to, yeah, look at these little spots here. It's going to be some solder mask in a lot of these areas here. Because you don't want to leave these little uh, corrosive marks. They will continue to eat into the copper there. And nobody wants that to happen. Uh, yes, I've I've recapped. Uh, oh, an Apple II C. I have not had to. Um, I have a few Apple II C machines. Uh, for the most part, they all seem to work. One has a floppy drive issue. Could be a memory problem, or could be the the, the integrated Wozniak uh, machine chip. Is there any copper under there? I don't. I don't even know. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, it could be some type of a trace under there. It's very hard to see. I think my, uh, yeah, this, this is tilted. My, uh, microscope is sort of, uh, tilted. So that's, hold on. It, it ha sometimes happens when I manhandle this and move it around and... And don't uh, tighten these things as, as much as I should. Okay, that hopefully.
That's a little better. Three electrolytic caps. On. I've never had to recap one. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't looked. Um, I have a few machines. Of a few of them. I've. I've. Two or three of my own. Then two somebody gave me to fix up. Um, they were having weird issues though, so I don't know what what they did to them before. Where, where is where is where is this? There it is. Let's try and clean this up here. I'm curious how this looks. But uh, I have fixed Macintosh two CIs. That's what I thought you said originally. But reading. Is hard. All right, so there is <laughs> there is uh, some of a trace still there. Um, looks like it ends right there. Yeah, I believe that trace is supposed to go under this chip, but. Uh, such an awkward position to scrape because you, you don't have a lot of wiggle room here so and I don't know if it's just I'm going cross-eyed or I just can't see through this correctly hold on let me uh I have to clean this too but yeah, that's a little better it sounds like uh there's a issue with uh what is it, the keyboard encoder, or what? I don't know what they called on those particular machines, but could be something very simple. Bad wire or a bad mechanism. Alright, so we're going to have to clean that up more. Just trying to get all the uh, little nasty bits out of these traces. Okay, anything else in this area here? I'm going to have to clean this up because that one looks pretty nasty, this air whole area here. Paranormal activity. <laughs> so I am launching uh, my own Discord server. I've, I've been in the process of doing this for a while, um, but like anything, I, I want to make sure I'm doing it right and uh, so I, I've kind of soft launched it and invited only a handful of people. So don't feel bad if you haven't been accepted. We're just messing around. Uh, and it turns out I screwed up a lot of settings and things aren't working out correctly. <laughs> so um, I actually, the reason I'm mentioning it is I accidentally posted that Discord link instead of this YouTube link uh, on Twitter before I went live. And so I said, hey, watch me on YouTube. And I posted the Discord link. Uh, which probably confused people. Uh, but a few people joined, and they're like, oh, oops, okay. And I messaged them and said, hey, heads up, this isn't 100% correct yet. Um, so just a heads up to you guys, uh, I know a lot of people have been messaging me. Uh, I usually am in the Action Retro Discord, or the Macintosh Garden Discord, or the Mac Yak Discord. Um, so I'll still be in those, but um, I want to do things like have like uh, an area where you could do voice chat with each other while you watch a stream like this or whatever. Um, and it feels like a, an appropriate place to do so. So, uh, details will be coming out soon once I've fixed out all those bugs, and thank you for all the individuals who will be helping me uh, as we, we, <laughs> we try and figure that out. Uh, I am definitely feeling old with all the settings and things. I'm like, hey, how does this do? What? What? What is this thing in the... What? what? So, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. The tweet has been replaced. <laughs> like, five minutes after I tweeted, I'm like, oops. <laughs> So yeah, just a heads up, I know I teased it a while back and just never got the chance to do it, uh, but I'm really forcing myself to try and do it. And there goes my scalpel on the floor. Excellent, Brian. Yeah, it's just, you know, I set up a bunch of channels, but, like, I want it to, you know, be 
you know, only some people could be in some. Like, I'll have, like, a Patreon-exclusive, YouTube-member-exclusive. I am going to look into the YouTube-member thing. I, I know um, some people on Patreon were like, oh, are you doing that? And I'm like, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense right now because you don't really get too many perks unless you have, like, 10,000 subscribers and then you could do other things. Um, but I am looking into that. Um, it just takes me a while sometimes. Okay, so let's fix this, because whenever I zoom in, you're zoomed out. So let's adjust this. So I keep messing around with this. No, it was really that color. Um, I showed a video of it earlier. Um, in fact, let me let me go back to that. <laughs> well, uh, can I skip ahead in this video? No, I can't. So now we'll have to wait. But here's, here's the video that I was referring to. If anybody missed the beginning of the stream, I was playing around with this soldering iron. I shoved a new tip in there, and I was filming this because I was going to do a review on the soldering iron. And um, so you'll see that this iron is going to get very, very hot all of a sudden. And so I accidentally dropped this, this little thing I'm playing with on the floor, like that. And the iron is off screen right now, and it's getting very, very hot. And it's going to emerge from the left side of the screen in a moment. And there you go. Look at that. Look, look, look how hot that is. My goodness. <laughs> it's funny to look at now, but the OS on the, the uh, little soldering station freaked out. It wouldn't turn or turn off or anything. Yeah, that was pretty scary. So that was not Photoshopped. <laughs> no Photoshopping necessary because, yeah, that actually happened. So gonna gonna have to factor into my review <laughs> yeah that was my reaction I think I had to change my pants after this but yeah that was that was interesting so let's hope that doesn't happen again <laughs> the goggles do nothing <laughs> real acid oh boy yes yeah, so that's an experience I hope to never relive a lot of crud Yeah, I think, I, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll follow you up with that advice, Bruce. I'm just, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see if it happens again. And Bruce is shaking his head. That lazy guy is not sending that back. No, I probably actually will. I just want to get through a few repairs here. Um, I like the tips and everything. Things seem to be working, but it is very concerning that it just froze up like that because it, it could happen again. Um, but uh, the settings that I did configure in there should prevent that from happening again. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different firmwares and all this stuff. I mean, I was trying to, to research this stuff while I was looking into which one to buy, and I just got overwhelmed. I mean, I could try and recreate it, but I kind of don't want to, so. And who knows, maybe you're just not supposed to put it on boost mode and shove something into there. Although, still, it shouldn't do that. Alright, so we're just getting all the gunk off of these pads. Oh, lovely. Oh, when you go over them, they all smell delicious as well. Mmm, mmm. Well, we are at 400, so... That's why I probably will never use that boost mode to 450. <laughs> but uh, a good 50 degrees Celsius should uh, separate that. But even more of a reason my, for me not to uh, put that up there. So, <laughs> Sorry, Christian. You may go back to your sleeping. 
Didn't mean to wake you up there, but thank you very much for coming to the chat. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> using the Knight Rider car. Uh, no, I did not set the tips on the end of the iron yet. Not that that should cause that, but I did go in there and turn on some functions that uh, should turn the iron off if the voltage dips because it's pouring too much power into the thing. Not that that'll work if the stupid OS is freaking out, but... Uh, Oh, when it glows red like that. Yes, it will. Jay, go away. It's not fixed yet. How dare you show up an hour and 28 minutes in and just go, is it fixed yet? The answer is no. Is your tractor thingy fixed yet? No. Good day, sir. Alright, we're cleaning up all this lovely gunk. Welcome to the chat. Define fixed. Oh, I'm sure you have loads of more work to do on that. Poor little Via. Yeah, this is definitely going to need some uh, love and care in a lot of spots, unfortunately. But uh, so far, I'm pretty confident that uh, all these issues can be resolved. I mean, there's just a lot of little things we got to watch out for. And I have to order new flux soon. I said that in the last stream. But... Start crawling around with the laser razor blade. There we go. Sometimes you just need, like, the tip of the iron to just, like, nudge that old, crusty piece of solder off. And that does the trick. Excellent. All right. <laughs> I think Joe learned very quickly he needed a microscope after I was found all those solder balls uh, on his machine. <laughs> on, the, on the SE30 board he sent me, rather. But, uh... I'm sure he's saving up for one. Cause they ain't cheap, let me tell you that. Fire indeed hot. All right, so let's get all this extra solder off of this. These uh, these pads here, so we can continue cleaning these up. Oh, just look at how efficiently it sucks the solder onto this wick. I've never seen an iron do that because my previous iron uh, didn't want to work correctly either. So I seem to get uh, bad luck. I'm getting tools most of the time. <laughs> Actually, all the time. <laughs> uh, 
previous soldering iron didn't, uh, you know, heat up enough. This one tried to explode and kill me. You know, <laughs> lava indeed hot. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, so let's try and uh, clean this up a little bit because there are definitely some traces here that are concerning me. I'm going to get all this crud out of the way so we get a better look at that. Got a little, uh... Let's make that flat enough for us to work on it there. Alright, cool. Yeah, so just going to keep on cleaning this area a little bit because there's still some gunk hanging around here. So as the quadra being fixed, maybe we get some good... No, I, I don't even... And see, I've looked at that board so many times. I might have to send it to Bruce. Don't tell him that, though, because then he won't accept it. But... <laughs> but my goodness, that board just is... Ugh. So many layers on that board where things could have gone wrong. Bruce is going to be like, what the heck is this package from America? No! <laughs> He's going to open it up. <laughs> Return to sender! I don't know this guy! <laughs> yes, Joe has excellent videos. Go subscribe to Joe's, uh, Joe's Computer Museum here on YouTube if you have not done so already. And while you're subscribing to things, subscribe to uh, Mike from Mike's Mac Shack. And subscribe to Bruce, Rankus Creations. Excellent, excellent channels here. That's concerning. There's little dots here just around the uh, the little vias here. I just want to make sure those are cleaned off. <laughs> well, maybe you could combine them. No, wait, no, no, no. Then you're going to keep the working one. Never mind. <laughs> So let's take a look here. Oh, we don't want that on the board. Thank you. All right, so let's see what areas we may have to fix. Um, it wasn't anything too bad here, except I'm concerned. Yeah, some of these traces just have a bunch of gunk on top of them. We'll clean that up. And yeah, this is all cloudy. I need to wipe this again. Oh, see, mine, to at least to my vision, it's hard to see because the board on those machines is, is very dark brown or black. Um, it looks like all the traces are okay to me on my Quadra 840 AV board, but, I mean, who knows? Who knows? I've already fixed a bunch of them, but who knows what others I've missed. All right, so we have a little bit of a corrosion going on there. We have some going on here as well. Just 
getting all those brown and dark green spots off of these areas. We'll fill those in with UV solder mask later, but uh, scraping it away just to make sure that that is making a connection there and everything's still okay. Hello, David. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for stopping by. Fixing up another Magnetosh SE30 here today. Probably going to go for another hour and a half or so. Not sure if that's going to be enough time to fix this one because there's all sorts of little things going on here, but probably can give another hour or so. See what uh, type of progress we make. Just all these little holes just full of gunk and yeah. Yeah. At least there's still copper under there, so that's good. Yes, we saw that. Uh, very, very glad to have uh, Logan's nightmare over. My goodness, what a pain in the butt that was. I mean, I feel sorry for him. I, I was helping him out there trying to get everything working. Um, but that's a nightmare. And you know, having him, it can happen to anyone. I mean, geez. Sure made me uh, go and download all of my old live streams because I've been doing... I. You know, try to remember to download them every once in a while, and I got behind on doing so. So I'm like, oh, geez, if this happened to me tomorrow, I'd be unprepared. I'd lose a lot of my content, which would stink. So. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything else here that uh, is too concerning. Getting a cramp in my hand, which is excellent when you're trying to scalpel small things precisely. Okay. Oof. Alright, so that wasn't too, too bad, I don't think. Oh boy, where did I drop? You gotta start spamming me like that. We're gonna remove you from the channel. So, hardy har har. I looked at the monitor. All right, the moderators are, are uh, harsher than I am. So be aware. <laughs> really, especially when Grudy accidentally taps the ban button with his butt. That was funny. Not for the person who got who got banned, but it's funny because he managed to do it with his butt. You've been butt banned. All right, so <laughs> copyright Mac eighty four. You all heard it here first. All right, so let's take a look at the traces over here. We have some of the same junk going on here.
That one's concerning. I'm going to get the multimeter out here in a second just to make sure uh, we don't have deeper problems here. <laughs> oh, this chat has taken a weird turn. That's why I select that this stream is not for children. All right. This one has some pretty deep uh, corrosion going on here. I think that'll be okay. Just a lot of little problems here. <laughs> Yar! We be banning you with your booty. Okay, so let's continue here. Um, that is concerning as well. And the via right next to this one. Ugh. Yeah, that is just crumbling. Hopefully there's enough of a connection there. And we're gonna we're gonna test that out in a second with the multimeter. Because that's concerning. That that's just eaten away there. <laughs> Downright corrosive. Alright. So we got our... our uh, sorry we've been out of focus there. Did not uh, realize it. I see a little bit different than what you guys see there. But... Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Vina. Vina? Ho hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, eep! And uh, I'll give you a move if you'd like. Move! I'm a bit rusty on the move, but... Uh... <laughs> Alright, so let's see... But thank you very much for the super chat. Very much greatly appreciated. Uh, let's see if we can get continuity on the other side of this board. Hopefully, we don't have a a bad via there. Oh, good. It's actually connected. How about that? So it just looks like crap, but it still still functions like me. All right. So let's. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad. I can't pronounce anything for anything apparently. So. When I succeed, I take that in stride. All right, so it looks like those are the worst areas. Just seeing if there's anything else I missed. Yeah, these these two traces I, I want to map out. I'm just going to check over here real quick. I don't think we cleaned these two up. Did we? No, we did not. Ew. Yeah, let's, let's fix those up. Yay for the Via party! So again, just putting a blob of solder on the end of the iron here just to get away some of this gunk that has been on this board for the last 30 years or so. And clean up those pads so they could receive fresh new capacitors. Okay. All right, so let's get uh, let's clean up a little bit here. Well, we haven't fixed up anything just yet. We are just cleaning up some stuff. Then we'll we'll do some trace repair. It looks like we'll have to do, and uh, put some new caps on this machine again. Uh, may not be able to finish this one tonight, but I sure hope we can make some good progress on it. 
So that doesn't look too bad. Let's go to the other cap on the side here. Jeez. Nasty. Let's try and clean that up. Get off some of that old adhesive that was uh, sticking the old component on there. No need for that. Get that off of there. And these pads should clean up just fine. Alright, so we're going to use our solder wick here and just get some of the excess solder uh, off of those pads here and hello to everybody watching at uh, 40 of you right now thank you very much for sticking on by and watching the stream today I know we've had uh, quite a parade of se 30s recently so hopefully you're not getting bored of those but uh, they're quite fascinating machines and people love these little guys so uh, hopefully you are enjoying repairing the repair process of them and if you have one of these machines that you have not had recapped uh, this is just all the more reason to do so and proof of why these machines need recapping because some of them are just uh, becoming in uh, pretty bad shape these days uh, just due to the overall age of the capacitors and the batteries and all that fun stuff so. All right. Have uh, any of you in the chat had an SE30? I know a few of you have. Sound off in the chat. Do you have an SE30? Do you want one? Do you have a, a regular SE? It was an 800K model. Is an FDHD model? Let me know. I'm just curious. I know these machines are desirable. Not everybody. Uh, has been lucky enough to acquire one yet, but uh Son of <laughs> Had one years ago. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, I, I actually uh, have not had one until recently. Someone sent me a board to fix up that they saw it was so far gone. They said, Hey look, if you get it fixed up, it's yours, and that was my first SE board, so I'm excited to to uh, build my SE30, so I have uh, the parts to do it, and I will be doing it soon. So Anthony says, uh, just recapped an SE30, glad to have one back. Also an SEFDHD, excellent. Those are two excellent machines. <laughs> it really did fall into your lap. <laughs> It stood by your door for a year in college running simple text with a welcome message. <laughs> Excellent. Had four in your lifetime. Excellent, David. Um, oh, outside. <laughs> Two since high school. One of those fixed up the set and sent them across the moon. The other is still acting up after a recap. Uh-oh. Looks like it might need uh, some closer inspection there, Brian. Um, you were so confused. <laughs> that's... Well, you know, Joe, that's interesting because, they, yeah, they... I mean, people do mix and match machines or they, they put two together when they're trying to fix them up. Glad to know so many of you have had experience with these, these machines. They are quite fantastic. Um, I am very excited to get my SE30 up and running, but I had to, to fix these uh, repairs first before I could focus on my own machine. But uh, they are lovely little machines. And, you know, the Classic 2 isn't the best machine. It's kind of like the poor man's SE30. But uh, I could I could see the appeal of both machines. Did I forget to put flux on there? I forgot to put flux on there.
Oh, don't worry. Yeah, that's that's really like I'm. I, I see a lot of uh, videos, especially like the Marchintosh videos and stuff. I, I of of channels I, n I normally would not have uh, you know visited. Um, and a lot of this stuff, people retrobrite first, and I'm all for it. You know what? You want to retrobrite your content, your uh, your computers. It's your own device. You can do whatever you'd like with it. But I want them to work first, then I'll pretty them up. Um, and I still have a lot of my personal collection that needs, uh, you know, recapping or fixing up in one way or another. And so the retro writing is something I will likely look at eventually. I do have one or two machines that would be excellent to retro bite because they, they do look a little yellowed. Um, but it doesn't really bother me. I always just sort of consider that was like just part of the look of them. So, I mean, some people say it makes the plastic more brittle. Some people say it doesn't have an effect on it. Um, it depends on how you do it. Uh, I'm the wrong person to ask about that because I have zero experience retro writing machines. Uh, but some people seem to have excellent luck with it. And, you know, more power to them. I'm glad they do um, because some of the results look fantastic. But uh, that's just something I've not uh, attempted just yet. Not saying I never will. Uh, maybe once we get um, all of our machines recapped, we could focus on the cosmetics. But uh, nothing against it. I just uh, don't have the time currently to invest in it. But uh, maybe one day. That'll be fun. All right. So we looked at this trace here. Clean that up a little bit. Um, we'll probably have to run some new traces here because these go right under these chips. Oh, these are going to be fun to remove. Oh, boy. <laughs> <sighs> Do IMAX need recapping? Uh, you know what? Um, I've hear, heard mixed things. Now, they're, they're, the machines I tend to work on are much older than the IMAX, so their, their need of being recapping recapped is like yeah you should have done it last year or the year before that the imax i've seen some people that they've recapped them they have a lot more caps on them than a machine like this would um so i'm, I'm hesitant to do that because i haven't had to do it yet now some of the uh video circuitry or the analog boards uh those might need to recap uh, quicker than the analog board just because of the amount of power that is going through those capacitors so I wish I have a, had a solder... Well, I have a solder sucker, but it's not the best. Um, I'm probably a bit just better off uh, wicking those chips. I've done it before. These ones don't be uh, don't look to be terrible. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to do it anyway. Looks like these chips are identical. So I shouldn't uh, worry too much about that, but... Um, I guess let's put this soldering iron to the test. <laughs> because uh, we're going to have to... We're going to have to remove... Uh, those chips to see where those traces go and clean those up anyway, so Might as well might as well I Like your new glasses. Well, thank you. These are my old glasses <laughs> How you doing Dana? Uh, no, if I had sockets on hand, I'd love to install them. I do not so uh, I would just uh, reinsert the uh, the pins just as they were before. That's an excellent idea, though. If you do have the sockets available, be sure to do that. <laughs> oh yeah, the iMac G5 board uh, needs uh, needs recapping a lot of the time. So yeah, there there are exceptions. That I was just thinking of the iMac G3, but uh, okay. Dana popped up at the very beginning of the stream, and then he skedaddled. He probably was watching some TV. Or he was just snoozing. Both both activities that I enjoy doing. So. All right. So let's uh, that off. Now I'm gonna add some solder to the end of the tip here, just to sort of freshen up these joints before I remove them. That sometimes makes it a little bit easier.
I need to look into getting a solder sucker like uh, Bruce has. But uh, since I don't have one, I have a, a rudimentary one. It works okay, but uh, nothing I, I would need to do right now. Now I'm going to pump... No, 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 not the dreaded boost mode. Do not do that, you stupid iron. Um, how do I get out of this? Hold, please. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out this, this darn thing. No, hold, no! Bad iron. There we go. I'm just bringing up the temperature on this just a little bit. Uh, so I can hopefully, yes, okay. <laughs> Boost mode, activate! Uh, so I can get rid of, uh, some of these hopefully a little bit easier. So that's, uh, it's very curly today. Let's try and straighten this out. Alright. Let's see if we could suck the solder off of these uh, a little bit easier. Maybe. That is going to be fun, I could tell. Oh, not too bad, actually. There we go. It's actually not doing too bad of a job. It just made a huge difference the, the before and after the previous iron I was using in this. I mean, jeez. Even if it tried to burn down my house, it didn't mean it, I'm sure. Oh, I, w I wouldn't say I'm missing the volcanic power. I would say I'm happy to be alive. <laughs> How'd you end up in the hospital? My soldering iron done exploded on me. Let's see if we can just loosen up the solder that's there already. Hey Ron, welcome to the channel, we're streaming, trying to fix this SE30, I don't know why I started singing when you joined, it's a very bad reaction. <laughs> Alright, so let's uh, continue with our solder wick here, trying to uh, take these, uh, these pins out. So we can remove this chip and get to all the trace damage underneath. Ah. May I get that one from the other side? I don't think that one did it either. No, nope, there, it actually did. How about that? Let's see if we have to add solder to these ones, or if they'll come quietly. Try 
try one more. Ah, that one worked okay. Ah, almost. Well, it's a bit too far to start thinking about things logically now, Dana. I mean, jeez. No, I want to, I want to, uh, r there is, uh, some pretty nasty corrosion under there, so I just want to make sure there's nothing else screwed up there, um, <laughs> before we continue. <laughs> but, uh, more for curiosity's sake at this point. Hey Thomas, welcome to the stream. Always nice to see you stop by. So we're going to probably go for another hour or so, then I'm going to pack it in. Um, there is still quite a lot to do on this board. I don't think we can get it all done today. But we got a good start. We got all those nasty caps off, which is great. Let's try up here first. I, I'm just continually amazed on, on how night and day of a difference this has been. My goodness. Right, let's see if, uh, let's see how loose the chip is, because there's only like two pins that are holding it down at this point. Alright, so some of the, when I was soldering it, obviously some of the uh, solder leaked through to the other side, which is going to make this a bit of a pain to ease off. If I put the heat gun on it though, I'm pretty sure this will this will just be able to ease right up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some flux around the edges of these pins. And we're just going to use the heat gun just a little bit to persuade. Actually, you know what do I need? No, I might actually just be able to uh, just press the tip of the iron against uh, Where's my tweezers there? Against the uh, pins here. Sorry you can't really see this. I'm just trying to test this out real quick. Yeah, I should be using the copper, shouldn't I? Of course it should be. Just because there's a little bit of solder on the side of this chip here. Try that on the other side as well. Not quite yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna try these two uh, pins that were bugging me here, and then we'll, we'll try again. I also have to bend the pins. So that would help. 
Um, let's just try these two that were giving me trouble, and then we'll we'll take another stab at this. Sure that it gets nice and hot. Okay, let's try and take that away. We almost have 50 people watching here. Hello to everybody who's tuning in tonight. Hope you're having a good night. Hope you're enjoying your night. Or day or afternoon or wherever it is. It happens to be night here, so I'm just imposing, I guess. Ah, almost. Ah, almost. Let's see if these will uh, these will bend on their own or not. Yeah, all right. Some of these are just slightly sticking on there. Oh yeah, I, w I wouldn't have been able to even do it with the old iron. That would have just been awful with the old iron. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, they're going to use have to use the heat gun on this to try. And, there's just like little bits of solder that's just not wanting it to come off. So we'll just do we'll just fix that real quick. Won't be able to see it, sorry, but, uh, really, did I turn that off? There we go. taking much longer than I thought it would. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't have started this on the stream, but...
All right, so there was definitely a busted trace there. So I'm happy I took that off. And I will show you that in a moment. We got that chip out of there. So if we go back and look here and uh, focus that correctly. You'll see that there are two traces here. And even if they are not broken, I want to clean those up. So let me just adjust the focus here. There we go. And you can see with that chip there, it, was very, it would have been very hard to get uh, under there. So it's, I think I'm going to, yeah, there we go. All right, so I will be putting some solder mask on that one. Not solder mask, actually. I just, some solder should work fine on that. But yeah, I just wanted to make sure there was nothing else under this. Yeah, that's where... Couldn't really get the separation there. Okay, but that's good. Those those cleaned up pretty well. This is the one I'm mo I was most concerned about because it, it looks like it just ends right there. So that's more concerning. So let's uh, clean this up a little bit. Yeah, the last thing I want to do, and you know I've, I've said this before, the last thing I want to do is not take something off and then the client comes back to me a few months, a few weeks, says, hey, something's not working. And then I'm like, oh, I know exactly what's not working. That was the one trace I didn't look at or the one chip I didn't take off, you know. <laughs> Sock mask for Halloween this year. All right, so we're just going to put some flux here and we're just going to cover the little areas uh, that are exposed copper with some solder. And that should have a, uh, there we go, some nice healthy traces there. Everything should be fine. Let's uh, give it a little beepy to beep beep. Actually, it looks like there's a little break there, but let's uh, let's see. Where does this go? This goes to this pad, okay? Yeah, that's still it's still go. There's just some gunk there. All right, cool. So we can put this chip back on. Just gonna get some of the solder off of those uh, off those pins to make that easier, because we don't want to melt this button that's right there. That's that's a little delicate. You know, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Why are you adding solder to something you want to remove solder from? But trust me, it, it helps. A TR4 motherboard. Socket TR4. I've never heard... What type of a machine is that, Justin? I, I've just never heard of a socket TR4 before. But that stinks. I'm sorry to hear that. AMD. Okay. Is that a modern AMD? It sounds like an older one, I assume. Oh, a Threadripper. A modern one. Ooh, boy. Really? That's sad. That is sad. I hear those processors are excellent, too. How bent of a pin. <laughs> See, now, now, now you got me wanting to fix it. <laughs> Whew. 
Ooh. That's a good bend. Uh, I mean, I sort of owe you, Justin, for the delayed repair on some of those things, kind of. <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to send that board along, I'd be happy to take a look on it. I can't guarantee I, from any stretch of the imagination it could be repaired, though. But if you want to ship it on over, I'd be happy to look at it for you. But that's that sounds sad. I'm sorry. But I think you said you got a microscope. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah, you got a microscope, so never mind. You'd be looking at the same thing I'd be looking at. So. How is your microscope, by the way? Oh, good night, Matt. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Frederick. I am glad that you guys are enjoying the stream, so... Thank you very much for joining. So I'm going to put this chip back on where it belongs. Let's make sure we're not going to bend any of those pins here. There we go. That chip is happily in place. And so we're going to bend those pins inward while we hold the bottom of this just to make sure everything goes back in. Oh, I, I believe you didn't bend the pin. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have said, Oh, no, I bent the pin. Wait, I should be bending these the other way. Speaking of bending... Okay, let's try this again. They actually have, uh, as, as far as microscope recommendations, the, these, the microscope I'm using is, is very expensive. I, I do not recommend this one as your first one because although it is excellent, it's very expensive and, and you might not end up using it as much to facilitate the cost. Uh, I will say a very cheap microscope, and, and they're cheap for a reason because the quality isn't the best, but it's basically a little USB webcam with some magnification. And it does an okay job. It doesn't do the best job. Um, you can't look at it through a viewfinder. It's only through the computer and the software is crummy. But it does an okay job. And they're only about $30 or so. Uh, a step up from that, um, I know Bruce had some suggestions. Uh, I think they're in his uh, channel videos. Um, I don't have those handy. But there are some in-betweens where, you know, you get a little screen and everything, and the mag magnification is much better. Uh, so those are definitely uh, something to consider. Well, thank you very much, Frederick. I, I greatly appreciate it. Oh, sorry, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you for noticing the focus. Um, <laughs> that was just acting. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, I, I really do have a passion for these old Macs. I have been a dork for these old computers for as long as I can remember. So it is just full-on pure joy to work on some of these machines. Um, and so I, I'm glad that comes through. So thank you very much, Frederick, for the kind words. Uh, that Molar Mac was something I was so excited to get because... Uh, as you saw in the video, or maybe I mentioned it in the video, I believe I did, um, just prior to picking that up, I had driven out of my way in hopes of getting one, and the guy just wanted way too much stupid money for one. And I thought, how the heck with that? I'm not spending $500 or so on a machine, and his needed work. It was broken. So I'm not spending that much money on something like that. And lo and behold, I found one. <laughs> in pretty good condition, too. And it was it was free. I mean, I, I my back hurt for a while because I was lugging things around <laughs> in the dark. Uh, but it was a very exciting experience, and uh, I think it made for a heck of a good video. Okay, so I think I got all of those. No problem. <laughs> oh boy. 
That, that, yeah, uh, Sean, I have to agree. That was the find of the year. And, and that, coupled with the Macintosh clone, I'm still geeking out about that. I still have, I still think about that. Like, I still have, like, dreams about that. Like, like, I found, like, oh, man, I just, I just. Someone was looking out for me that day. That's all I got to say. That was fantastic. Did you get a Mac TV cube or anniversary? I don't have an anniversary Mac. I do have a cube. And I do have a Macintosh TV, but the board is messed up. Uh, it might be messed up beyond repair. I don't know yet. We'll have to do a stream on that. But the processor, I, yeah, yeah, never mind. I remember the processor is in very bad shape on that. I mean, if it was any other machine, I'd made, I, I would maybe want to try and resurrect that. But it's a, it's a crummy performer with an eight megabyte RAM limit. That's not really, <laughs> it might not be worth the time. Now we have a Q-tip residue all over the bottom of this chip here, but that'll be cleaned up. Your Grail is a color classic. Yeah, th those are excellent machines. And I, I tell you, go for stupid amounts of money. But, I mean, I'm glad I picked one up when they were cheap. Don't get me wrong, I love the machine. Uh, I see why it appeals to a lot of people. I just can't, I just can't fathom spending that much on, on one of those. Oh, thank you, Anthony. Yeah, those those machines are hard to find. I've been looking for one for a few years now, and I was very, very lucky to have uh, the opportunity to get one. I almost got one by trading a PowerBook G4 for one, and I wish I would have done that. That would have made my life a lot easier, but uh, that didn't happen. So uh, I ended up having to find my own, but it all worked out in the end. I think uh, that I was destined to get that one. It has uh, the AV card in it. Um, it's in pretty good condition, especially for being an e-waste dump. Um, it's a 266 megahertz model. It just needs a SCSI zip drive, but the faceplate's already there for it. Um, yeah, I, I have to, I have to spend some more time with that machine. I've been so busy doing repairs and other things in life got in the way that I would love to spend more time with that machine. But, uh, it's a very fantastic piece of history. Uh, I'm going to continue my iMac series, and that G3 all-in-one will be featured in it, because it came out so close to the release of the iMac. I mean, it was out around that same time, and that machine just disappeared afterwards. So, very, very fun to go down memory lane and just show off that machine and compare it to the iMac. I want to I want to do a shootout, you know, what can this do versus what the other did. I know, Jay, I know. Yes, and just like all those G3 desktop boards, the mini tower, the desktop, the all-in-one, you can adjust the processor speed quite easily by just adjusting those dip switches there. So we are just taking off the second chip here on the board. We're attempting to, rather. But yeah, my father actually used uh, a G3 all-in-one in his office. He uh, did a lot of art uh, managing and direction and all that stuff in, in, back in the day. And uh, that was one of the machines he used. And, and uh, I remember playing with it once. And I, I always just was enthralled by the, the zip drive on the front. I was like, that's so cool because you don't need an external one. It's built right in. With the CD drive and everything, it sort of had like a smiley look to it, you know. I just thought they were really cool machines. Now I don't know how my father actually got one because it was for the education market, but uh, I think they were they were sort of like a bundle, you know. You you it was sort of a, a good price, and, you know, if you didn't need to buy a monitor and all that stuff. I think the machines were sold at a pretty good value, so I wouldn't be surprised if a business found a way to get one or. They bought one discounted from a school that didn't need it anymore, or whatever. You know, who knows where they got it from, but. Yeah, I had, uh, I had, um, Tiger on my G3 mini tower. Um, yeah, those eight gigabyte, uh, hard drive limits are annoying, but, uh, you just make a partition of 8 gigs and you're usually, usually okay. It boots but no power to any of the drives. It might be a bad capacitor somewhere. That's all I could think of, really. Something with the power supply. From the Simplicity Shootout video. Oh, is that... 
Is that the um, is that the iMac one where the kid's setting up the iMac grind? Refresh my memory. Which video you're referring to? <laughs> I don't know. Art was a pretty bad employee. My dad just had to manage the heck out of him. But don't. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'll be here for the next thirty minutes. Uh, the mini towers are cool. I, I love my mini tower. I paid a heck of a lot of money for it. Like $300 for it, but that was back in the day. It was still a powerful machine. And I just love the customization of that machine. I mean, I would rip off face plates. I would put in a zip drive. I put in another hard drive. You know, I put in the PC compatibility card in there. I put in a video card, I put a firewire card in there, you know, just like the sky was the limit with that thing. I felt like, you know, that was, that was my first, like, modern-ish tower that I could really, like, upgrade for a reason, not just, yeah, let me just shove a card in here for the heck of it. It's like, no, I want USB on here, boom, put it in. I want firewire in here, boom, put it in. I mean, I didn't know back in the day that the bus speed of that thing was slower than, you know, a modern, a, a more modern tower would have been. I just thought it was the coolest. I still do. I have some rust on mine. I gotta clean that up. But other than that, it's in pretty good condition. There's some yellowing on the back of it, but it's like... It was like that when I got it, so... I'm not really concerned about it. Right, so let's fix those two holes there. That should be okay. Oh, well, good night, RetroTechie. Thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Oh, yes, the kid and the dog and the iMac with the compact. Oh, I wonder if I have that compact. Ooh. I have some of some compacts of that era. I wonder... <laughs> who be, who would be play the part of the dog? Well, I have I have a rabbit that looks like kind of like a dog. <laughs> that would be a funny video to do. It would, it would take way too long to make, and probably 10% out of the people that would watch it would understand what, what I'm parodying. But... Uh, That'd be fun. Or I could just do like a small clip of it in uh, in my iMac video. Just like homage to that. <laughs> Have an homage to that. That maybe I could do. Yeah, 50 megahertz of bus should be fast enough for anybody, don't you say? Ooh, that's on the ground plane. It does not like that one. No. This one needs a little help, too. Yeah. I mean, you could you could get a USB cord for the 9600. It, it's you know, it's not too bad of a step away from the G3, but it's you know, depends on what you use for it. Obviously, what you use it for, you know, might not be worth it. But they did make nice G3 upgrades for those machines. I have one somewhere. Jeez, this one does not want to let go. Let me flip this over so it switched pins with this one. It's the, that one and that one. Alright, so the front and the back. Right, let's try and work on them from this angle. So for the 46 or so people still watching, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. 
We're just trying to get this chip off so I could resolve the trace underneath. Now, I don't think there's too much trace damage on this board other than these two areas. But, uh... I have to get this done, so... Yes, I, I have done that before, but I think... Uh, I mean, that, that is a good suggestion, Jay, and if this fails, I, I will do that. Um, but I think what the issue is, this is the... I mean, at least one of these is ground, so it's just sucking up all the heat I give to it. And we'll see if, uh, if I can persuade this otherwise. Uh, so the iron is at 419 degrees Celsius right now, so it's not, it's not a... Should be uh, sucking this up pretty good, hopefully. Why can't I see this clearly, but it's clear on the camera? What the heck keeps going on with my microscope here? Sorry if you're blurry for a bit. I need to see this correctly. Uh, what the heck? Oh, come on, man. It's not happy. <laughs> Hold my beer. Boom! Yeah, I mean, um, the Sonnet Trio, was it the Trio or the Tango? Maybe it's a Tango. Um, those are the ones with, it's Firewire, USB, and an ATA uh, 133 card. Man, I would love to have a stack of those. Hello there, friend. Oh, boy. Yeah, somebody on Twitter the other day was like, oh, you should get one of those... Uh, Harmony G3 upgrade cards for the mezzanine slot of the iMac G3, and I'm thinking to myself, you know how stupidly expensive those are? <laughs> I haven't even seen one on eBay, and if I did, it was probably over like $500. Look, I love these machines and all. I love to tinker around with them. I do not have $500 to spend on a silly upgrade card like that. I'd love to borrow one to do a video on it, but... Uh... I'm not that YouTube famous to be able to just throw money away like that on, on such objects. Don't get me wrong, it'd be awesome to play around with one, but uh... Okay, so... Not making much progress on this one little, little thing here. It's quite annoying, honestly. Um, there we go. 
Come on, keep going. Ah, let me cut it at more of an angle. That probably wasn't. Uh... Let's get in there. Just need to slam this with a heck of a lot of heat, I guess. No, oh, no, no, no. Jeez. It's so, these things are so tiny. I mean, you're looking. You're looking at my microscope. You might think, oh, that's not too small. Jesus, stuff is so tiny. Oh boy. <sighs> I mean, once we get these traces fixed, recapping this board is going to be a breeze by comparison. Yeah, actually, since that since that is uh, not by any plastic, let's. Just bend these pins and blast it with the heat gun to get it off, because I am losing my patience here. Oopsie. These are all going to be a pain in the butt to take off. I can just feel it already. But we're going to try. Those of you who are still with me, thank you for sticking around. Today. All right. Wait for this thing to heat up.
we go. We'll be able to pry that chip up slightly. There we go. My goodness. That was frustrating now, wasn't it? And watch, this chase will be just perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. Hopefully it'll be it'll be okay. But I really just want to clean this. Yeah, because that look that's nasty. I'm going to run a new wire there because that is just uh, concerning. Let's see if I get any of the uh, solder out of these uh, holes now, huh? Let's see. Maybe, no. Almost. Almost. This one's not going to bud at all. I think I need the bigger soldering iron tip. The one that almost blew me up. Let's turn the station off. Take out the pointy hot pin. Get the other one. Plug it in. Turn it on and make sure it doesn't explode. That's the important part. Very important part. Ooh, that doesn't sound too pleasant, zombie. <laughs> Oh yeah, there we go. Just need a bigger tip. Now we're in business. Boom! Boom! <laughs> I love this. Now here's the real test here. Okay, this is gonna this is gonna require some uh, <laughs> some strength. Clip off the uh, used portion of this here. <laughs> oh, Joe. Hey, look at that. I 
Fantastic. Clean this up now. Hey, Anki Morpheus. <laughs> oh, no, we didn't give away any IMAX or anything for that matter. We gave away my time and my dedication. How about that? Now, you missed, you missed uh, a lot of uh, crunchy capacitors. And some stubborn chips that wouldn't want, uh, didn't want themselves to be removed. That's about it. I mean, it, was, it was exciting. Spread out over 2 hours and 49 minutes. But when I sum it up like that, it just sounds sad. So, I want to run a new wire here. So, this is my wire. I want to run a new trace here. Let's see, is this too thick of a wire? Maybe. Yeah, that's too thick. Let me get a slightly smaller one here. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, if you want to give it away, you're welcome to. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not giving away mine. <laughs> I only have one that that works. It's mine. Okay. Oh, oops. Ooh, that sounds that sounds like fun. Switch back to the other tip. CRT yoke. That is unfortunate, but I mean, it's apparently an easy thing that happens. I, mean, I thankfully, knock wood, have not done that to a machine yet. Kind of surprised I have not, but uh... all right. So I'm just gonna uh, put some flux on the board here. That one too. We'll get a nice trace here that we could uh, fix up. We're going to fix this up, obviously, but I just wanted to get it uh, into that position there. Oh, yes. Always gently rock them side to side. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that does sound painful.
All right, so. So that trace is nice and uh, happy now. Let's take off some of the extra solder there. So uh, it's not going to cause a problem when we redo that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some UV solder mask over that just to anchor down that trace. God forbid anything gets too hot and it starts to wiggle or anything, it's going to hopefully keep that in place. Okay, all right. No worries, Joe. I'm uh, going to wrap it up soon, but thank you very much for stopping by. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's really sad when that happens, but, you know, sometimes it, it just... You know, it, some things you could try very carefully and everything, and it just doesn't go your way. That's just how it is sometimes. All right, so let's get out the uh, solder mask here. my very fancy tool. There it is. No worries, William. Yeah, I'm going to uh, bail out here in a little bit. I just want to fix up some stuff so I don't forget where I am with this repair as I get solder mask all over my hand there. Let's put a ton of it over there. It's going to be under the chip. No one's going to see it, but it's going to uh, make sure, at least try to make sure, that some of this stuff stays in place there. may be overly cautious with a few of these areas, but I do not want to have to remove that chip again. <laughs> so, better safe than sorry, huh? Alright, so now it's time for our little UV laser. Pew! Uh, cure the UV light. Uh, the, the solder mask, rather. Well, thank you very much, William. Greatly, greatly appreciated. Very, very kind words from you. Thank you. Which one will he neck first? How romantic. See, now we're just getting silly. But uh, honestly, the overall condition of this board um, doesn't look too, too bad. So I am hoping by the next stream we can get this all fixed up and in working condition. That would be fantastic. Because these, these boards are really great, and uh, I want the individual to enjoy these for years to come. So let's hope we could fix this up for Tim. So Tim has an excellent, excellent Macintosh SE30 to use for a long period of time. This blob is going to take a while because it's so large there, so we'll just... Try and hold that steady. And for the 40 of you who are still sticking around, thank you very much. Now's the time. If you have any questions or anything uh, at all you want to ask, feel free to. Oh, well, that's excellent, Joshua. I mean, these machines are, are just, uh, where do baby rabbits come from? Bigger rabbits. Uh, <laughs> um, these machines are just excellent, so I'm, I'm very glad to 
prevent any from being further. What are you doing with the UV light? Excellent question. I'm sorry I didn't explain. Um, so there is this green liquid that I put on the board called UV solder mask. And you see the green parts on the board. Well, if I turned on the light, you'd see. All that green on the board is also solder mask. So what I am doing is when I scraped away something that has been exposed, uh, if that bare copper is exposed, it could corrode in the future. So to prevent that, sometimes you could just splash it with solder. But what I'm doing here is I covered that solder with the UV solder mask just to add some extra protection. And also in some areas where I do not want that solder or that copper accidentally touching something, if I'm going to be soldering something next to it, I want to coat that so nothing can touch it. Uh, so the UV light, the little laser I'm shining now, is curing that solder mask and is hardening it. Otherwise it's going to stay in a liquid form. So what I'm doing is shooting this little laser light over it. And what that's doing is it is a it is curing that solder mask and uh, that is making it all nice and happy. <laughs> I can always rely on you, Michael, to say exactly <laughs> untrue statements of what's going on. Although entertaining statements, but. Okay, so I think that's okay. Might have a little too much in some areas, but that should be okay for now. So let's turn the lights back on. And let's just poke it with the scalpel, make sure. Yes, it, uh, it adheres to the board. It's pretty hard to remove. I mean, you could chisel it away and such. Um, if it gets too hot, sometimes it will melt off if it's not fully cured, but, uh, it should, it should stay on there. Right, that could use a little bit more time just cause these blobs are so large. That could just use a little bit more time. Uh, the reason I dimmed the light is so both the viewer at home and myself have a bit of a better understanding of exactly where that light is shining. Because uh, it is so bright, sometimes it is hard to see. <laughs> well, next time you come over, Mike, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if you all the right glasses anymore. <laughs> Welcome to Mac 84's Cheapo Eye Surgery. Blink and you'll miss it. Laser light show after the stream ends. Pew 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 pew. <laughs> I could only see out of my right eye, but boy, can I see. flexible yeah it's still a little what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually um, let this cure out in the Sun just for a few moments um, because I just want to make sure that is absolutely rock-solid I could be shining the light on it for another few minutes but my hand is starting to cramp up and I don't want to do that uh, so what we'll be doing next stream is a uh, 550 yes I do have a 550 uh, what we'll be doing next stream is we'll be putting that chip back on. Um, we'll be putting all the caps back on. I'm going to clean up this one spot before I forget because uh, we forgot to touch this up. Ugh, that looks nasty. Uh, but we'll be continuing with this board. And hopefully we only need another hour or so more to go on this. But that is more than my uh, attention span will let me spend on this right now. But um, it's actually looking pretty good. It's cleaning up pretty nice. I'm... I'm glad because the board looked to be in beautiful shape when I got it and it would be a shame if we couldn't fix this up.
That pad's gonna clean up nice. Well, thank you, Joshua. I am glad you have entrusted your your board with me. I take uh, these jobs very seriously. I'm very glad uh, to help anybody out with their with their systems. Obviously, um, a lot of time goes into this, and if I'm going to be spending a lot of time on these, I want to make sure I'm doing it right. I do appreciate everybody keeping me company. It's definitely much funner than doing these by myself. Alright, so let's suck away all that old dirty solder here. That looks that looks much better. It still needs some cleaning and such, but <laughs> oh, the things I could tell him about how to recap of a Macintosh. The things we could say, right, Bruce? I mean, this comes from the guy who. Uh... Oh, never mind. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> I haven't watched enough of his content to make silly claims, but uh, I hear he does good stuff with modern stuff. That's all I gotta say. I'm glad the old Macs are getting more attention, though. That's that's the bright side of it. And I could say, I was doing it first. All right. Would you consider yourself an Apple simp? I have no idea what the heck that means. What, what are these kids talking about? I've been using Macintosh machines since I was a kid. Uh, I use PCs as well. I have a PC for games. I enjoy using it very much. I'm very critical of the company in some regards. Some things they do excellent. Some things they do a poor job of. And I will never, ever... Uh, let them go for those things because I'm critical of them. I'm not somebody who's just going to be like, ah, oh, they do everything great. They're fantastic. You know, they could do no wrong because that's just silly. It's absolutely silly. Yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of people I know have been using these machines for a while, but I'm, you know, it's I'm one of those people that have been using them a bit longer. Uh, you know, some people start around when they switch to Intel, and that's great and everything, but, you know. Those, these terms are very confusing to me, so I'm going to say no. Uh, <laughs> they try to get the facts right on the main channel. <laughs> that's how it always should be, but okay. Alright, so yeah, this board is cleaning up pretty well. We're going to have a better go at uh, putting these chips back on. Well, this one chip back on. That'll go back here. Uh, and we'll put those new capacitors on that we'll, we'll get that uh, all settled. But uh, yeah, any questions or anything before I go? Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, how many Microsoft machines do you have? None, because Microsoft doesn't make any hardware that I've ever owned except for, like a mouse. Yeah, um, Microsoft does has not made hardware for a while, and then they started making their Surface things. I think that's like the only hardware they do. But they have an Xbox. <laughs> that's, that's maybe maybe that. I don't have a Surface. Um, yeah, I know they. The, yeah, the chat's delayed. Yeah, I know they make the Surface, but uh, I don't have one. Uh, I have an original Xbox, and I think I have an Xbox 360 that's partially working. But uh, when's the next stream? Um, probably Friday or the weekend. That's probably going to be the next stream. Uh, if you want to catch me then. But, um, yeah, I guess that's about it. But thank you for everybody for watching. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for all the, the kind uh, comments and everything. Thank you for all the likes and the subscribes. Um, I'm glad you found the channel, too. Um, <laughs> the Xbox in all capital letters. Uh, yeah, that's the one they make. But, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, everybody for joining. I'm going to take a break here and uh, 
not solder things for a while. <laughs> but thank you very much for watching. Uh, be sure to tune in for the exciting conclusion. Uh, I'm going to transition back to the bigger camera here so you can see me. And yeah, that's about it. But thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. And uh, take care, everyone. Stay safe out there and uh, go hug your Macintosh today. <laughs> take care, guys.